Oh, hi everybody. This is Christopher Naiman. Um, I'm trying to do some free motion um, embroidery or what we can quilting. I have just playing around some quilt, doing some quilting. Um, the traditional way that they tried to teach me years ago and I'm finding it a little bit difficult to control and I know they tell me later on, oh, buy some rubber gloves and put them on. Well, you know, how many times have you been to a sewing class and they've got, you know, just your regular sewing machine, nothing extra on here, and you have no big flatbed surface to sew on, and, you know, you're doing this and you find yourself, you're putting pressure on your shoulders without realizing it, and before you know it, you can't do anymore because you're just not comfortable. Well, stick with me and I'm going to show you the proper ergonomics and how to do free motion. Well, welcome back. First and foremost, as you notice, I replaced my little uh, arm there with a extension table. And you can get an extension table from your sewing machine dealer where you bought your machine. And there's a couple places online that you can purchase uh, custom-made uh, the clear acrylic tables to do free motion. Now one of the most important things about doing free motion is you have to have a flatbed surface. And if you have your machine in a sewing cabinet that is recessed in, you already have a built-in flat surface to do your free motion with, which really helps. So now that I have my free motion um, extension table attached, and this is great not just for free motion work, but when you're sewing with, and you want to keep your fabric flat for proper ergonomics. So when we place this under here now, what we have is, see how nice and flat it lays? So still, uh, if, if we're going to still try to do this, it's very difficult this way to try to do this. And then they tell you put Teflon sheets under here. And what I like to do is a couple things. Now, if I'm doing, some people like to do wall hangings and you know placemats and things, and this would be a great size to work with. And what I like to do is I like to roll up my sides or just fold them up and hang on to them like this and then start doing my stitching. I have better control. I've got two fingers I'm using as my grip and I'm just able to move this around like this with my two fingers. My elbows are placed on my extension table, one here, and then my arm is laying on top on the right side. And what I'm doing is I have better control this way and I'm moving it around. Now this is spray basted. Um, traditionally you would use pins or you can buy a batting that is uh, uh, has a fusing on it. Now I'm just doing some traditional stippling here for you and you can see that it's moving so much nicer for me. Now, if I have to move or reposition, I'll just do this. I'll just fold the fabric around and then um, re-grip it with my fingers and start doing this again. I'm also using metallic thread on here. You know me and my metallic thread, I absolutely love it. So, you know, stippling is it's just doing like jigsaw puzzle pieces. And, you know, you don't have to do that for any type of artwork only, the sky's the limit with whatever, whatever you're doing, you know. But this is traditional work that we're doing here. Like if you're going to be doing some painting, uh, thread painting, you know, back and forth, filling in the line, and then you, you know, you can even do with a zigzag. If you've never been to a free motion class, look for these things that they, you know, to be taught properly. The, the ergonomics is very important and I see a lot of bad ergonomics being taught out there and um, I really feel terrible for the students because the teacher teaching is not teaching the ergonomics and you know it's almost like everyone's self-inflicting their, their own pain um, when you reach a certain age in life you start getting arthritis and bursitis in the shoulders and doing this kind of stuff puts pressure on you then you invest in the pharmaceutical companies and you buy a leave and you buy ibuprofen or whatever it is and some of the things are just so simple in life that no one ever takes the time to investigate. So here this is, and listen, someone asked me in one of my classes, what happens if you're doing a really big quilt? You know, my suggestion for that is get a frame. Put your machine on a quilting frame or buy a long arm machine, make your life easier, you know. So, uh, but you're doing little sections like this. And another issue too is if you have 
a, if you cannot afford a frame or a long arm machine, another option, and this is absolutely incredible. My friends at Martelli Notions came up with this new ring. And this is called the Martelli Gripper. It comes in a couple different sizes. Right now I have the eight inch size. This is just really, really awesome. On the back, it's got this special tacky type um, cushion. And that really grips your fabric well. So if I'm working on a larger quilt, first thing you wanna do is put this on. Let's say this quilt I make is a lot bigger than this. And I don't do quilting per se, like many of you traditionalists do out there, but I do do free motion work on three layers, so they do call me a quilter. Okay, so, and understand in this, in this, in the industry, quilting means three layers of fabric that you're sewing through with one, the middle being a type of a batting. So if you do that, you're called a quilter. If you don't do that and you just piece the top of your quilt, you're called a piecer, okay? Or in Australia, as I was told, you're called a topper. But if you're a fiber artist and you're doing free motion and you've got three layers, whatever, you know, you actually call it quilter. So anyway, this grip here is just incredible. Now, if you notice, I'm, I rolled up the fabric on the side to get out of my way. And the gripper has these two little knobs to hold on to, which will move this. Look how nice this moves it ever so gently. It's just uh, fantastic. So let me put my foot down, do some of this sewing here. And look how nice that moves. And I still have my arms up on my flatbed extension table. I'm sitting close to my sewing machine for proper ergonomics. You know, lots of times when I'm in class uh, teaching, I see a lot of people, when they sit next to the sewing machine, they're actually not sitting next to the sewing machine. They're sitting a couple feet away and stretching their arms out, kind of like they're going like way out here like this. Um, bad ergonomics again. So I'm not here to diss any teachers out there. I'm here in support of all the people wanting to learn the right way to sew. And, you know, I take what I learn and say, okay, how can we improve on that? Companies like Martelli take notions, they make notions to improve better. Now watch, if I need to reposition, I'm just gonna slide the hoop over, move some of this fabric out of my way, grab the grip here, and now look how beautiful. I don't need gloves in my hands, I, I'm not putting pressure on my shoulders. This is moving so beautifully, okay? And let me zoom the camera in so you can get a look of how easy I'm moving this closer, okay? All right, so here we go. You see how nice I'm moving that? And by the way, like I said, I'm using metallic thread on this cotton fabric with a cotton batting. And if you notice, my thread is not broken. And if you watch my previous video, it's because I'm using my thread tower by Tacconi. And watch my previous uh, metallic thread videos to see my setup on that. It's the metallic thread video tips. So you see how nice this is moving along? And if I got to reposition again, I will just either turn like this, okay? Turn like that. I also like to keep my grips in the nine and three o'clock position. Let me zoom this back now, so. There we go. In the nine and three o'clock position. Perfect. My arms are up on my extension table. I do not have shoulder pain and I'm perfectly going like this. Now, what happens in sewing classes is they will teach people how to do, like I showed you in the beginning, push like this, move it like that. You don't have a flat bed surface. Your fabric's hanging off the edge if you're doing anything bigger. So this is the way to do it. And if, even if you have your uh, sewing machine in a flat bed surface, uh, in, in your recess in a cabinet, this grip really works well. And this is in response to some people who ask me, well, what happens if you have larger fabric? Okay, so I hope the tip helps you. And give it a try. The Martelli Notions website will be listed on this video for you so you can order this. My friends up there, those guys are so innovative, you know. These men come into the sewing industry and they're designing and, and, and you know, they're, they're engineering things that make it work better. It's just wonderful. And then I go to the sewing classes and I see the teachers, what, they sew, what they're teaching, which is total bad ergonomics and everything. And like I said, I'm here in support of the students to learn properly because without proper sewing education in the beginning, it'll make it difficult to be a good sewer, quilter, whatever you're doing. 
learning the proper techniques and methods in the beginning to make your sewing easier um, is the beginning of total success. Proper planning and the right teaching will give you success as a student and as a professional. So here we go, and there it is. Look how easy this moves for me. I don't have any Teflon sheets under here. I don't have to wax my surface. I don't have to wear rubber gloves. And this is what I'm doing. Look how simple and easy is this, ladies and gentlemen. Make your life easy. Thanks for joining me today. You all take care. I'll talk to you in my next video. Love you. God bless.